Just lately, I was advised by my good friend, Daryl Reeves, to share stories. And because that really sticks with people and, you know, you remember that way past the information. If I, I share a lot of information in videos, but a story sticks with you. You know, you remember it. And I thought back in my own experience and I said, yeah, that's true. There are journeys I've been on, you know, visualizations and that, that I can remember in total detail during a seminar or a workshop or an event. And um, yet I can hardly remember any of the information that was shared. So I'm going to start with stories from my life about things that really matter to people and that we all experience in one way or the other. And I thought the thing to start with is money. You know, money is an incredible story we all experience in our lives. Um, we need it. Very few people can get along without any of it. I mean, in certain countries, they do. Um, in certain areas of certain countries, people get along with very little money. But they do need resources or the equivalent of money. They need to generate food. They need to generate shelter. They need to generate resources they can share with other people. And that's important. It's a really important part of human life. Now, for most of the people watching this, for you, it's going to be something that you deal with. You either have a lot of, you wish you had more of it, you don't have enough of it, uh, you don't have any of it, but you need it. And money is something that I talked about in one of my videos several years ago about how to make money while you wait, and it was very popular. But a lot of water has gone under the bridge since then, and I've matured in my understanding of money and what it means to make money. You know, one of my favorite stories from when I was very young was getting a um, magazine, um, a comic, a comic book, um, something to do with Donald Duck. But in it, there was a character called Uncle Scrooge. And Scrooge was someone who made a lot of money and was very, very tight with his money. And one day, um, someone asked him about money and he said, look, I've written a book on it. You know, buy the book off me and um, that'll tell you the secret to making money. So the person bought the book off him and went away. Now, this is all like Disney cartoon type stuff. And uh, the character who bought the book got home and opened it up. And what it said on every page was, if you want to make money, get a job in the mint. Now, that reminds me of Johnny Depp being asked in an interview, um, you know, what turns you on? And he said, breathing. <laughs> and so the interviewer said, well, what turns you off? And he says, not breathing. You know, it's so obvious. It's so right at the core of it. We don't make money, but we do need to generate resources. And I've spent years looking at human design particularly, other things that I've worked with. You know, I've worked, my father was um, the chief financial officer of what became Foster's Brewing. So, you know, money was a huge part of his life. His father was the editor of the biggest newspaper in, Australia, in Melbourne, Australia. You know, so money's sort of a big thing in my family background. And getting those sort of resources can make your life, having access to that, 
creating cash flow, as a person called Robert Kiyosaki said to me many, many years ago, you know, cash flow is king. If you can create cash flow, then you've got a business, you can get on with life, you can invest, you can run businesses, you can contribute, you know, you can enjoy yourself in life in any number of ways. It's not the only way to enjoy yourself in life for sure. But cash flow really does matter and it makes a difference. And then yesterday I was listening to someone I admire in the surfing world called Laird Hamilton, a real artist and innovator in surfing and in physical development and a bit of a philosopher as well. And he said something that just resonated with my 69 years of experience and, you know, 50 odd years or more of really looking at money and finance. And he said, I have no problem with money as long as there's purpose. Money for a purpose, that means something. And I just went, yes, yes, money with purpose. You know, again, um, Robert Kiyosaki used to say, you know, money, money is something that loves to be used. It loves to be put to work. You don't just accumulate it to have it. It's drawn to people who respect it, who relate to it, who allow it to do its thing or allow it to empower them to do what they're designed to do. And so the first thing I want to share with you in this is if you can discover not the purpose you think you have, not the purpose other people have told you you have, but your purpose as a unique individual in this world. And then you can use that, own that, you know, recognize, acknowledge it. Acknowledge it means own it. And then celebrate that. Then money is drawn to you. Reap all the resources you need. You know, what money might buy, but you've already got the resources, so you don't need the cash because you've got the resources. Money will be drawn to you. So the first thing in creating resources, in making money, is to find out really clearly what your unique purpose as an individual is. That's one of the grand attractors of money. That's one of the things that, you know, when Steve Jobs, when Bill Gates, when, you know, people who you know and look up to have made money, the money's been drawn to them because they had something that they were designed to do. It was part of their nature. It was part of their role in life. Now, there are a lot of incredibly talented people and again, I was talking to Daryl yesterday and he said, you know, I've known so many people with so much talent and yet they don't have the money to realise that potential. And the thing that really struck me was it's not having talent. It's identifying the purpose of that talent. That's the key. It's not going, I can just do this and this and this and this, but what is the purpose? And that's something that's very personal, very deep. Um, when you know that purpose, it makes a real difference. Because you've got the talent, but it's going somewhere. It's moving in a, in a way. It's drawing to it what it needs. So let that in and then let's take it to another level. As I've said, each of us has a unique design and I've worked, it's not the only thing I work with, it's not the only thing I've developed 
in my life, but it's an extremely useful tool and an extremely useful body of information because it talks about something that you actually have that's very tangible, very real, can easily be experienced. In fact, you learn about it far more through experience than through reading the manual or hearing people talk to you about it or studying the information. It's something that you have, and that is your design. You have a design that's unique to you. Otherwise, you would look exactly like at least someone else, if not everybody else. Which means that design, which is unique to you and unique to every person who's got money and doesn't have money and everything in between, that design has a purpose. But then how does that design draw the resources to you or create the resources you need in the way that really works for you? Look, if you want money, you can get a gun, go down the bank and stick it up and take it off, take it off them. Or you can get a job. And there's thousands of other ways of making money. But is it what you're designed to do and is it fulfilling the purpose of your design? Because when you are doing what you're designed to do in a way that fulfills the purpose of that design, then money can truly blossom. Then it's going to be the resources you need are going to be drawn to you. And they're not going to leave you with so much, you know, free time, boredom, frustration, you know, anger, bitterness, all these sort of things that people get who can have. I've met people with tons of money who are really angry at themselves in the way they treat their health or bitter about what their ex has done or the way they were treated here or there, or frustrated that it, that hasn't brought them not just the happiness, but the contentment that people truly look for. You know, being happy, there's a many, many ways of being happy. But again, um, one thing Laird Hamilton said in the interview I saw yesterday, contentment. And that's, I totally get it. I was going, yes, lad, if you hear this, it says contentment, you know, because when you're content, you are living your design and fulfilling your purpose. And when you're content financially, you're using those resources, those finances to live your design and fulfill your purpose. And that's where money becomes something that is fulfilling, makes sense, is drawn to you. And I've given some clues about where I'm going to go to next because this is very, very, very important. I'm going to show you whether you've ever heard of a thing called human design or not. I don't give a damn. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to show you some designs of people and it may be familiar to you or you may have never seen it before. But it's not about that body of knowledge. This is about giving you an insight to the fact that you have a design and it works in a very particular way and it's very purposeful and money, getting, uh, you know, getting the resources you need is built into it. In other words, if you can come to terms with your design and fulfill your purpose,
then money is not something you are deprived of unless that works in your best interests. You know, the way the world is set up is there is enough food. We create the systems that, you know, isolate it. But we could just as easily create the systems that would make it so that everyone who was alive had the food they needed. That's not beyond our capabilities as human beings and human communities and societies. And money's very, very similar. So let's have a look at some designs. I'm just going to share screen. This happens to be mine. Now, don't worry about all the bits and pieces. This is a map. Think of it as an electrical wiring map of how you're designed to operate in the world because that's exactly what it is. And because it's so intricate and got a lot of detail, it means that you are a one-off. There is so much intricate detail here when you go into the depths of it. It boils down to the fact that each human being is a one-off. But what I want you to notice, I'm going to flick through a few designs. There's another one. There's another one. And you can see they're quite different. Okay, they're all over the place. But I want to bring you back to one thing that's in common with every single one of them. There's coloured stuff and there's white stuff. Right? Just pull back from that. What you saw was there's stuff that's coloured, any colour but white. That is what you're designed to do. And everything that's white is where you are designed to receive. And I'll put it simply. You have a unique pattern of colour that is a very specific and detailed map of what you're designed to do. And there's a whole other part in white that describes in detail how you're designed to receive the support you need to do what you're designed to do. In other words, the first thing to get really clear is you're designed to do something unique and you need support to do it. Every human being has that. We're designed to do something and we need to receive support to do it. Now, when it comes to making money, you are designed to do certain things. Let's just talk about creating resources and making money. There are certain things you can do that are valuable because you're you're the bomb. You're the bomb. You're, you know how to do that better than anybody, whatever that is. And you're also designed to receive support to do that. So there's a very clear indication that you can do something in order to make money. You can find a way of making money with what you're capable of doing. It's a, just a matter of identifying exact, what, what is your unique gift? What do you do? And you're also designed to receive the support to do it, which means you can not only do things that you can monetize and you know, turn into things that you do that other people find valuable and will pay you for or invest in, but you're also designed to receive money. 
making money is not all about doing. It's about having the ability to receive what you need in order to do what you do. When you're doing what you can do, what you're gifted at doing, it draws resources to you. It draws people to you. It draws resources. It also attracts money. And when you look at any one particular chart, some of us, some of you, are designed to make money by doing, and others are designed to receive money, to make money by receiving. And all of us, to some extent, are a blend of the two. And it's identifying that. So you're not trying to do what you're des designed to receive. Now, the biggest obstacle to this working so that you have the resources that you need is trying to do where you're designed to receive. Just let that... Most of us are trying to do where we need to receive support. It's a major confusion that has occurred over thousands of years, which I won't go into the whole story behind it. But the big story of that story is we've been blocking our ability to receive the resources that we need. We have learned to block it. And each of us in our own unique way. And trust me, it's, it's not easy to let it go. It isn't. It's because I could go into all the technicalities behind it. But the bottom line is this. Our ability to receive is so strong is so powerful that it draws to us and it opens us up to everything that's around us, right? Everything. And then our mental processes think they've got to get on top of it. And then we put all this effort into getting on top of everything that's going on in our life. It burns us out, it wastes our energy, it blocks what we need emerging or even us identifying what it is we need. And it distracts us into things that aren't what we're designed to do. I mean, this is, this is the big story. <laughs> That's what's going on. The resolution of that is when you identify what it is that you're uniquely gifted to do and the purpose behind that and allow that part of you to decide of all the options out there, of all the things that you could get into, of all the distractions and opportunities and possibilities and people and resources and, you know, ways of doing things and ways of making money that are out there. Which few of all those possibilities really support you doing what you're here to do? Now, as far as money is concerned, it boils down to this. Which way of making money is going to support my purpose? Is going to empower me to do what I do and do it with purpose, with a sense of I'm doing what I'm here to do. I love it and I'm content with the way I'm living my life. And all the rest of the possibilities out there let them go and let other people have them. You know, Steve Jobs focused on computers and Bill Gates the same. Mark Cuban focused on taking care of customers. 
giving them experiences, making sure the customer had a great experience, not just a product, but a great experience. Steven Spielberg took a leadership role in guiding people to different types of more imaginative movies. And you can go on and on through famous people. And I'm not saying they were fulfilled or content or whatever. But each one of us has something. It might be planting rice in a rice field because something about that just turns you on. I was listening to a monk here in Thailand. He's on TV, on Thai TV every morning and he gives his like at eight o'clock in the morning, the holy man comes on and gives advice and he's really spot on. He's very, very good. He speaks Thai, but they translate it into English on the TV. And he was talking about exactly this yesterday, about how people chase the money and chase this and go for this and do that. And, you know, they think people who live in rice paddies, uh, you know, live a hard, terrible, and some of them do, for sure. You know, my partner spent something like 14 years of her early life doing exactly that. Exactly that. And she wants to do more of it in the future because it wasn't a, as bad an experience, you know. And in terms of her feet, they're so flexible. I'm going, why didn't I do that? <laughs> you know, because my feet are pretty stiff being a runner for a long time in my life. And, you know, it's just, it has its advantages. But he was saying, you know, that if that's what, is that if that is a no if that is something that that person feels great about that they truly love to do that they're turned on because they love nature or they love the fields or it provides for their family or whatever if they feel noble in that then there is nothing deplorable or you know whatever you want to call about it and if it gives them dignity, if they feel dignity in doing that work, no matter what society thinks about it, then it needs to be treated with incredible respect. As great as a great leader or someone who's a financial or someone who changed the world because they brought in cell phones or whatever. And it's true. It's utterly true. So the key with making money is work out your design and what the purpose of that is. Realise it involves giving what you're capable of giving, doing what you're here to do and receiving. But that receiving is huge responsibility. It takes a lot more consciousness and just doing stuff because basically our design is we're designed to do one thing and if we do it we're going to be satisfied or at peace or successful at doing that and if we're not we're going to get annoyed and frustrated and you know bitter about it or you know it's just not going to feel good or be you know it won't be what we're really here to do but it's this one thing, but receiving, there are so many options. You need to know how to discern which, is the, which are the things to receive, where, which way to make money and how to go about doing that and with whom, with whose support and in what way that's going to truly fulfill you, bring you contentment. That's going to truly open up the full dignity of who you are and what you are able to do, because that's what's going to last. You might touch one person in your life or do one great thing, 
again quoting Laird Hamilton, who was a great uh, interview yesterday, said, I've worked 50 years of my life for one creative experience, like riding an incredible wave. I'll prepare, he said, not work, I'll prepare. Or maybe you're going to change people day after day after day after day, their lives, which is something I've had the privilege to at least interact with thousands and thousands of people over the years I've been doing this. Choose what are the things that are going to really support you. And to do that, you need to decide what is correct for you. And that is where knowing your design really makes a difference because it gives you that ability to decide. And then you can, it's not just a matter of doing what you're designed to do, but it's knowing how to decide what support to let in, what to allow yourself to receive, what is going to support you doing what you're here to do. Because without that, you can have all the money in the world and not know what to do with it and waste it on wine, women and song or whatever. I've met people like that, you know, in their 60s, retired and just physically devastated by excess. I've had clients like that, addicted to being busy on the phone, you know, complaining because they only get 10 calls a day on their cell phone now. I mean, it's so sad. People in Hollywood who are just surrounded by extraordinary people who I've met personally and talked to, not well-known or anything like that, but people right in the midst of the scene and well-off and just almost on the verge of suicide and despair that their life is so meaningless. Surrounded by everything, but what is going to benefit them? And seeing them at the end of the night going with some situation that just was purely a distraction. And yet I know people who've got so little who are so content and have so much dignity. You know, in my life, there's a group, I've got 15 people in my family. And that is a major purpose of why I make money now. Before two, three years ago, four years ago, when I came to Thailand, hey, I only had me to take care of. That was my purpose, to relax and enjoy myself and just share some of my stuff about human design and, you know, just loosen up and lighten up and found I really enjoyed it here. Four years later, <laughs> 15 people I'm taking care of, you know, that gives you purpose. And just watching how providing income for those people just you see this human potential explode they're not just it's not like making money and giving it out to people who are you know long gone or struggling or in real have real real problems it's just bringing that moolah that money you know and giving it to people who just need a spark and they will run with it. Who have a design and a purpose. Who know what they love, know who they love, know what their family's about, know what they want to give to their children or give to their mother and father and pass on down to their relatives of, of just watching human beings come alive. It's just awesome it's magnificent to have that opportunity and now making money is it's the reason i'm doing this video is because i've been really put in a place of going 
you know, what do I do? What is my purpose? How do I receive? What is going to help me really do what I do better than anyone else? What I do best. And then having clients who are in a similar situation, you've got incredible talent and go, how do we make sure that that talent doesn't just get wasted? How do we help each of them find, how do I help each of them find, get aligned with their purpose and get aligned with the design that's meant to fulfil that purpose and enjoy life being a human being and open up to what, not just what they do, but how they receive and then put it together. So giving and receiving, you know, I was told a long time ago, in all, it's better to give than receive, but in order to give, you must know how to receive. Because otherwise it's not sustainable. And this is a time now where it's all coming down to what is, what is really needed. What resources do I need, do you need? And how do we bring to the table what we're, we really need to identify what it is that we do. And what do we need to receive to do it? And then what happens when we put that together? You have a life that's truly well lived. Because that, that this expression of life that I am, that you are, gets to express itself. Call it its purpose or whatever, but it gets to express its true self. Now, I feel it's, let's just stop it there. I'm going to do, just decided now, I'm going to do a second video, maybe another one, I don't know. I'm just doing this as I'm inspired to do it. Where I go into how each of the different designs, there's major categories, how each of them relate to making money and what they do and what they receive. And then, go into more detail about there are certain parts of the chart that are related to making money but a lot of that is a it's true but everyone's got it every single part of the chart you have you have it either in doing mode or receiving mode it's like genes the genes in our body in our dna some of them are switched on some of them are so called switched off I say some of them are in doing mode and some of them are in receiving mode. You've got all the genes. They're not inactive. The ones that are supposedly inactive are in receiving mode. Making happen and allowing happen. Allowing things to happen. giving the best and receiving the best so that you can give more of the best of who you are. That's what sets up win-win. And I want to go into that in terms of your design and various people's designs because you need to be aware enough so that you know what's coming in to your orbit, the type of people you're working with. And one of the greatest ways to make money is in teams, in groups and teams. Why do families come together? Because they work better than individuals when it comes to generating resources and, you know, raising children and providing for and empowering each of the different people. You know, you can get more out of yourself in a group and a team in the majority of cases. And even if you're a raging individual, you still need support. You need people around you who support you being an outrageous individual, you know, who give you the space to do your thing. Now, giving you the space to do that is support too. 
So we'll go into that with the various different types of design that are out there and then go in and look at some of the details. But it's all going to be in terms of how do you take advantage of this? Because you've got it all. The key is to know how to put it together. And the biggest shift is not mistaking receiving for what you're here to do. Opening up to allowing things to come to you so that you can do the thing that's so natural for you to do, you probably or in many cases have overlooked it because it's so easy for you. It's so natural for you. And even if you know that, how to tune it up to get the very best out of it. And that's partly tuning the workings, but also opening to receiving more. So we'll talk about that in the next video. It's been a pleasure talking to you and look forward to seeing you again soon.